Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Lego Movie. Oh, baby, Friday, SketchUp Live Day, and Aaron's here with some, you know it, you saw it, Lego. That's right, Lego bricks. We got them in the background, and we got them on SketchUp today because it's going to be a great one. Dynamic components, question mark? We'll see. It's going to be a great modeling show, and here is Aaron Dietzen, your host. Hey guys, thanks for showing up. Uh, my name is Aaron Dietzen. I'm going to be doing some modeling and sketching for you. Uh, you and I, all of us, are lucky enough to have Matt Robison co-hosting today because... Uh, Lego. Hello. He, he's the guy with the soundboard and the awesome intros. That's what he does. That's, that's, uh, that's his thing. He does a great job at it. For now, I'm holding on to the soundboard. Nobody else can do sound effects. It's only me. That's right. <laughs> our sometimes co-host jody is uh actually he seems to be okay with that he doesn't really seem to be upset about you holding on to the soundboard <laughs> Nah, he's happy just to well he he can you know he can duck it just himself he can he can hold his own but i need the sounds as like a little crutch ah. whenever i have nothing to say then i pop in with some <laughs> you know funny noise or something that works hey that's that's fine that works uh, yeah, so it's Friday. Friday means live day. So we are here. We're streaming some SketchUp Live, which is something we do every single Friday. So if this is your first time joining us, welcome. Uh, Bienvenidos. Bonjour. I don't know if that means welcome. I don't know what that means. Hello? I think it means hello. Hola. I got that one. Um, hola. Hola. <laughs> <laughs> Before um, we get started, I, so normally in the show, we do, we say hi to people at the beginning of the show up top, and then we play our little, hi. you know, our little hellos and all this <laughs> as we go through. Um, I got an email from a great viewer named Philip, and he suggested, hey, why don't you have some non-English uh, greetings? And I thought, hey, that's a heck of an idea, Philip. Um, and so we got some non-English greetings today. And he also is going to send me some of his own, his own personalized greetings. And uh, heck, I figured maybe you guys need to do the same. So uh, for the future, if you have other, uh, if you have a greeting or a sound that you'd like to play on the show, you know what? Email it to me and I'll put it on the soundboard. There we go. My, e my email is Matt underscore Robison at Trimble. I'm going to write it in the uh chat here i wasn't expecting to do this so sorry if i'm fumbling through it <laughs> i so while, while matt types because typing and talking is hard i do want to say how much sense that makes because as we're seeing in the chat right now people are they're all over the place i, I this is one of the coolest things that i it, it always impresses me every time we do one of these live streams is just the fact that you guys are everywhere you guys are all over the world people are joining in here in colorado um, which I call boring because that's where I am. It's just it's just normal uh, where it's <laughs> noon. But then there's people coming, you know, dialing in first thing in the morning or they're sitting down at eight o'clock at night on a Friday to join us. Uh, super cool. It's, it's a lot of fun. And uh, it's it's really cool to see to see that happening. So, yeah, giving a nod to the the international attendance is definitely a great idea. Yeah, for sure. So uh, hi from, uh, we, I don't have all the languages yet. <laughs> this is sort of a last second edition. So I do have some languages, but uh, we have Newfoundland. Hey, We have, no, so I don't, yeah, I don't have that one, unfortunately. Uh, let's see. We, I don't have, uh, we have Norway. Greetings. Raisa from India. Namaste. Ha ha. Nailed it. Ah, kese han. How are you in Hindi? Which, ah. How I know. Um, Halifax. Howdy, partner. Panama City. ¿Qué pasa? Is that Spanish, perhaps? Uh, Portugal. ¿Cómo vai? ¿Cómo vai? As we all know, means how's it going? Uh, at least in Brazil Brazilian Port Portuguese, we're working. This is a work in progress. Easy for you to um, say. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, let me just run through some greetings here. Yay, to the bank. Nigeria. Hey. Cumbria. Hey. We have Turkey. Um, Hello. Ecuador, Denver, uh, UK, Washington. Selamat siang. Kamu nak tu? Bonjour. Hey. Apa kabar? 
So hello and welcome to the global SketchUp show. Uh, it's global every single week, but now we it's try to include globaler. That's right. <laughs> global before, globaler now. That's right. So hello and welcome to everybody. Thank you for awesome. tuning in. And uh, yeah, I don't want to tally any further. Let's get into the SketchUp, why don't we? That's right. Let's pull back on the tally and push forward on this the modeling. Uh, so wait, is it Terry? I said tally. Anyway, sorry. Okay, that's the last. <laughs> that's the last thing. Terry on e for Turn that Terry right? off. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay, go ahead. So, so this is actually uh, this was an idea. I think Tyson had the idea of doing a couple sessions on Lego. So it, cool idea. I wanted to preamble just a bit. I'm not going to try to ramble on too long, but the question, of course, would be why would you model Lego in SketchUp? Uh, you know. Lego does have its own 3D modeling software, uh, the Lego modeling software, where you have a database of all the pieces and you can go in and put them in and you can actually make like instructions out of them layer by layer. There's also four or five pretty good third party tools that do that. Um, what I would throw out is if you are a SketchUp user, modeling something like Lego just as, as, a, as a, a, a way to practice modeling and uh, just a fun thing to do on the side, is a great way to get better at quickly modeling basic geometry and working with components. Um, I So at this point, really outside of these Saturday or Friday models, I don't do a whole lot of just sit down and model in SketchUp anymore. Uh, when I do, I try to pick something kind of fun to model. That would be something I would be interested in anyhow. And I think there's something, I mean, you guys, you guys in the chat, let me know if this is true. I have this hypothesis. That people who you guys are hearing that right <laughs> is it on i think somebody's uh leaf blowing outside my window so here i'll mute my mic for a second sorry about that <laughs> you got some it sounds like a fly flying around it could be me could be me there we go <laughs> sorry <Silas>. about that <laughs> um but i think there's i think there's a connectivity between people who would model something in sketchup for fun to create that thing in 3d and just have it in 3d and someone who would enjoy just just as you know as a, as a fun thing to do um putting together a model kit i think there's a connection between the two because uh, i kind of have very similar feelings in my brain this similar endorphins are releasing or something when i sit down and just model something i want to for fun and i get to sit down and put lego together i i, I have a suspicion that there's a connection there on a brain level but that gets into biology and that kind of stuff. And I don't, I don't want to weigh in on that, but I think that's a bit true. So the two align for me anyhow. Uh, so I wanted to jump in and show you guys some of the things I've done with, with modeling Lego, and then actually talk about like how I've gone upon or gone about creating these specific shapes, because this kind of gets a little bit into what we've done before with machine modeling. So machine part modeling, where we download uh, a CAD imagery of very specific pieces and, you know, model them to, you know, millimeter accuracy or, or finer than millimeter accuracy. Uh, it's kind of falls into that too, where we're going to, everything has to have the exact right ratio. Otherwise your Legos don't work. So, uh, yeah, that's one thing that's so cool about Lego to me is that it has to be like, you know, strong enough that can hold together, but, uh, you know, not strong enough so that a kid can pull it apart. Yeah, and it's like that that tolerance is very, very small. It's it's pretty cool. I mean, and I know some of that comes down to, you know, material sciences and ABS plastic and the rigidity and a little bit of give and that kind of thing. But yeah, think about a Lego. I think, Matt, you were saying that you watch somebody take like a 60 year old Lego and a brand new Lego and they just. Just yeah, ever since uh, I think the last like the oldest Lego you can still use is from like 1957 or 58 that fits in with the modern ones. And it's like, oh my gosh, like <laughs> whoever made them up then is just like yeah. probably sitting back like, oh man, what a beautiful design by me. People are still using it like, you know, 70, yeah. whatever years later. So, hey, good on them, whoever, yeah. whoever you are out there. Good job, unknown Swedish toy manufacturer guy. Um, actually we, so we did actually recognize, I forget his name. I apologize, but, uh, we, we did recognize the person who patented the original minifigure, the little characters that come with Lego kits. Uh, we actually recognized him and modeled a minifigure several years back. So 
That was kind of fun. Ooh. Yeah. Nice Easter egg sitting in the YouTube back catalog if you right. want to go find go that. Go find it. And it wasn't, I don't think it was the main point of the model either. I think we were doing something else, but we spent like the first half hour quickly modeling a minifigure. Um, so That's the kind of fun you can expect here on Sketch <laughs> right. We don't know what we're doing yet. <laughs> Speaking of that, let's get into something. All right, I'm going to switch over and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Lego. Lego. All right, so uh, I grabbed a couple of pieces that I've already modeled. And we're just going to use these as uh, to talk about the proportions of a Lego brick. So I'm not, uh, I don't stress too much when I'm modeling it of having each brick be the real world size. If I pan out here, so here's Niraj. This is a real life size person. You can see that these bricks are big compared to him, right? So, I mean, he... He could trip over this, but he probably wouldn't have to worry about stepping out and hurting his foot too much because it's kind of big now. So, hey, maybe that's what Lego should do. You know, get rid of those bottom of foot injuries by making him big enough to trip over instead. <laughs> the bigger, the better. That's right. Probably a little more plastic in these pieces. So, so uh, I could always come back here and, you know, when I finish modeling something, scale it down by... A percentage or scale to exact to, to get its right shape but for what i was creating for all the models i've done in lego i've never really worried about that um what's been more important to me is just that the pieces connect together because what lego will do is the you know different layers different pieces will go together on different sides of a model and then they'll come together in the middle and meet up at the perfect size because everything in lego has this uh proportion set to it every there's like rules to how big things are I've created uh, a set of numbers that I use to model all the Lego bricks I use that uh, honors that that uh, aspect ratio of the pieces without worrying about like making them super tiny. And this this is the re one of the reasons for this is, you know, some of the, some of the pieces that Lego have will have little tiny round corners or balls or or rods or something like that that are really super super tiny and modeling them at real high size i would end up potentially running into the small face issue in sketchup uh, if you don't know what that is sketchup was created to be an architectural modeler and is primarily an architectural modeler but uh so it doesn't necessarily create real small geometry very well it does however let you create larger geometry and scale it later with no problem so maintain the small geometry it just doesn't always good job of do a good job of drawing it so yeah, that's right. That's right. That is right. And uh, w one thing that I think is funny is that you're talking about like, you know, rules of Lego and like numbers and stuff. That sounds opposite of what you know, <laughs> what you normally do on these it's, live streams. <laughs> man, it's, it tests me. And this is this is a you know, it's kind of like when we do the machine part models, like going in and, and you know, exact precision dimensions. I, I do tend to lean more towards sculpting in 3d and just getting shapes in there that look and feel good but uh this no this is this is honestly a lot of precision um that's right i love it and also speaking of precision let's be precise about where lego uh is from and it's from denmark it's a danish company i believe you said sweden earlier people oh. are co correcting you in the chat here so thank you to those keen-eared listeners who um my yeah, apologies right. i said that totally wrong i do know it's Danish. I don't know where. Oh, sorry. Stupid American. Stupid, stupid American. No, you're all, you're Hello, all good. sailor. It'll never happen again. Sorry, no, now, now I'm lying to you also. Um, Where's my bond? Okay. <laughs> so I want, want to just, sh so like I said, I want to dive into this a little bit and just talk about these proportions. And then I want to show you guys some of the other models I worked on. And then uh, we'll, we'll go about creating some bricks from scratch. So I pulled in a one by one plate. A plate is the short ones and a one by one brick. The bricks are the, the tall ones. Uh, bricks and plates have uh, an aspect ratio. A brick is exactly three plates tall. So if I stack this guy, grab him, option copy up one, two X, that's exactly the same height right there. See that? Um, and I gotta say right there, I'm just gonna start with this. Doing something like this, grabbing this and saying, I want to copy it and then say, I want to copy it how many times? I want to copy it six times. That'll spoil you in the real world. 
<laughs> you can't do that in the real world. Are you modeling something that has symmetrical pieces? You know, you've got to model a foot over here and then make another foot over here. In SketchUp, you copy it and you paste it and you're done. So there's definitely, uh, yeah, some shortcuts that happen in the digital world you don't get in the real world. That's nice, especially with the really small pieces where I'm like, oh, no, I need like tweezers to put these put together. That on, and put that on. There. Yeah. Ugh. Um, so the next thing is these studs. So again, I, when you look at the, uh, like the patent drawings or somebody does, you know, a schematic, it's, I can't remember, it's a fractional number of millimeters wide that a stud is. I don't remember the exact numbers. So I came up with uh, 12 units and that this, this worked really well for me. So the stud being 12 units wide, in this case, I'm drawing in centimeters and then four units tall. So 12 by four is a stud. A brick then ends up with a one by is 20, 20 wide. And if I look at the bottom, of course, this, this square that the stud slots into is also 12 meters or 12 units, also four units deep, because that's how deep the stud is. And then the walls are also four deep. So with those numbers, oh, and then, sorry. So this, this is four right here. The thickness of the top of that plate is another four. So the overall height of a plate is eight units. So then mm. this full stud is three times eight, which of course is math. So that all yes. adds up. <laughs> uh, so I know, I know immediately the question comes in, well, if this smallest unit I have is four right here, why not make that one unit and have it bring everything down? Um, there are some pieces that are smaller than this value. So there's some like a little one by one wedge comes down. I think that is about a third of the size of a plate on the end. I can't remember the exact numbers, but there's some pieces that get smaller. So uh, just to make these, uh, these dimensions divisible for those smaller chunks, I intentionally kind of jumped up to those numbers. Um, Smart, least common denominator or common denominator? Common. Yeah, it's not yeah, the least. The so there are pieces that's the same. There's pieces that are smaller. This is a small piece, right? Because this is, I think somebody put in, oh, so so Simon put in, yeah, that, I think that's correct. A Lego unit is 1.66 millimeters. And good call. I think that's this value. Is that correct? Is that the, the thickness that they use? I think that's 1.6 uh, millimeters. But so they take that number and they just use it. It's, it's just repeated over and over again. Another reason that I came to round numbers is because I can do four times certain numbers to get heights, right? I can take 20 and 20. So if, if a one by one is 20, a one by two is 40. One by four is 80. I could do that math in my head. Taking 1.66 and dividing that out multiple times or multiplying, I just, thus the reason for scaling up to a common unit that I could use. So, right. People talk about base 10 and base six, but it's like, yeah. there's probably a reason base 1.6 didn't take off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe if that had been taught to me in school, I would have dropped out earlier. I don't know what it would have. <laughs> so, uh, so what I end up doing again, I'm just giving you guys a high level overview. We'll talk about working with these in just a few seconds. Um, but what I ended up doing is as I create these, I do make components and then, uh, these components then are used to make, you know, you, so if I want to make a one by two brick, I'll take this one, option copied over, and then I will make it unique. And now I go into entity info, and this piece is currently called one by one brick number one. Well, I'm still not gonna call it that. I'm gonna call it a one by two brick. And then I'll come in here, and this is, this is what I'm saying, this becomes very quick and very easy to grab half of this brick and just scoot it over the width of, of a one by, which is 20. So I just grab it, pull it this way, 20, enter, grab this stud, option copy to move it along the red axis, also 20. And with that, I have a one by two brick. So nice. that and gets- And those studs, I saw the stud was like a separate container. Is that a um, component? Yes, it is. So this guy right here is actually his own component. Um, I did that intentionally also because, so you can actually see when, look here. So I do have uh, 
profiles on right now, which I usually turn profiles off, but you can see the thicker line right here. So this geometry is not merging with this piece down here. That was just a way to save energy and time because that stud, there, I mean, there's two different kinds of studs, right? There's this one, and then there's one with a hole in, in it on, you know, they can stick the smaller pieces inside of. So I have a component for both of those and I just drop them on there. And if, a, so if I have a, a two by that has those empty studs on the top, I can just grab them and swap them out. Super easy. Um, and I don't have to worry about going through and cleaning up geometry. The first model I modeled Lego for, I didn't do that. I actually went through and cut the hole in the top face for every stud and made it one solid piece. I don't see the value in that anymore. It's a lot of work <laughs> and you actually end up creating more geometry because this right here, this is just a single face right now. If I go cut a hole in it, I add a whole of new edges. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's just a lot, it's a lot more. So this right like this, th this is a lighter brick than it would be if I went through and merged it all together. This, this stud, this component, one, one component just with many instances. So it actually keeps the file smaller and more performant as well. That's a good call because everyone knows Lego sets have a, a lot of pieces. And if you have, <laughs> yeah, a lot of geometry repeated over and over, that can make your file pretty big pretty quick. To that point, I want to share a couple of models that I have created. Um, we'll just go, we'll go to the oldest one first. And this was, I learned a lot in creating this, but this was, in case you haven't seen it before, this is the Lego Millennium Falcon. So this is one of the Ooh, biggest out of shadows. Look at that flyover. Woo! This Exciting. Oh yeah. That um is, I should probably turn. That's good looking. I was I was just showing off a little bit. Let's turn fog off. All right. So this five or this model is thousands of pieces. I don't remember exactly how many, but there's a lot. There's a lot of pieces in here. Um and I started modeling this not knowing exactly how big it was because this took me literally <laughs> months to model. Uh, and I just started using, I was using that same aspect ratio uh, where the stud is 12. And I just started going through and just, you know, as I, the, all the instructions, I should point that out. All instructions for all Lego uh, kits are available online. You can go to lego.com and you can download PDFs of any Lego kit, which is really cool. So mm -hmm. that just has all the pieces in there. And you can go through and figure out, you know, just model each piece, save it as a component. So if I look in here and look at my components, I'm going to see just so, so many pieces. So I did a couple things with this model that I wouldn't do if I did it again today. One thing is you can see there's different colors of each pieces. So that means... So this brick right here, I have one, two, three, four. These two look like they should be the same, but for some reason they're not. Five different versions of this brick. What I started doing instead of that is just model them all in white. And then as I use them, paint the container. I know that I, painting the container is something in general you're not supposed to do for production models. But in this case, uh, it cuts the model size down into like a fraction of the size. Um, mm -hmm. plus these, those, those, they're not going anywhere. They're not going to like, we're not going to take off paint based on the square footage. I'm not going to go in and color a single face and fig can't figure out why that's not working and that sort of thing. So, uh, that's something I don't do anymore, but, uh, yeah, going through and just getting every piece modeling it one at a time. And then what I ended up doing as far as breaking this down, if I go look at my tags there, they are, my, uh, for some reason, my. Windows over here all out of order. If I go grab a single bag, let's go into to bag one. Actually, I'm gonna look at outliner instead. So each each bag is put into its own group and then tagged separately. That way I can flip them on and off real easy. So if I wanna come down here and just start turning off sections, I could do that and get down to a single bag. Is the bag the order that you put it together in from the Lego instructions? Right. So the instructions have it broken apart by, you know, bag one, the, all those pieces there, bag two, bag three. So that's, it's cool. all that way. Um, once I go down to a bag like this, I can come in here, click into it. And then uh, each, I think I have it by, oh, maybe not. 
Okay, so I've come up with a better system than this too. But this is, so this is all the pieces that were in that first bag. What I've started doing since then is actually grouping each step also, just because it's easier. And if there's a problem, there's, there's always a problem. It's real easy to go track down where that issue is and fix it. So with this, uh, like I said, each section was made that way. And if I go to outliner, yeah, so I didn't, this is not, this is not beautiful. I just have a bunch of groups. This, I was learning when I did this. There's yeah. a great, a great model to learn on the biggest Lego kit ever available at the time. <laughs> That's how I do it. Yeah. Well, Hey, you got to, you know, you got to take off a big bite and then it uh, looks like you chewed and digested the whole thing because the whole thing coming together is very impressive. And I have to echo everybody in the chat who's saying that, um, like, look at what you've done, you know, Just hang that up in the Louvre, you know. Somebody said so, Louvre in the chat. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> they, that's what they were all thinking. Of that's, course. I get that. Um, yeah. Oh, and also David is tuning in from Brazil. Hey, tudo bem. Tudo bem. Awesome. Um, yeah. But yeah, that is uh, a crazy model. And I don't, I remember you posting the the steps of, you know, um, progress on it. And I was like, whew, that's a lot. <laughs> that's, that's exactly how it went. Whew. Um, yeah. And I did. So you guys, if anybody wants this model, it's actually on 3D Warehouse. Uh, it is broken into three separate models, though, because it's too big to post by itself. Or it was at the time that I posted it. I don't know if the the how big of a file you can post is anymore. But uh, it is actually up on 3D Warehouse. So you can download it in three chunks and just uh, put them into a single model. And everybody, a lot of people, you know, isn't it isn't it too big to, to move? I actually have this and uh, another model that's even bigger and look at in a second is loaded right now. And it's not, I mean, it's not the snappiest model to work with, but uh, it's not terrible. And I mean, we've, we've covered, I have a MacBook Pro 16, so it's not an M1 or anything like that. Um, it's an okay Mac, but it's not like a, a monster. So it's not as, uh, not as bad as I think people think it's going to be. One of the things that I intentionally did though, you can see the bottom of plates don't have little circles in there and the bottom of bricks don't have little pegs coming on underneath. Uh, that was just to save weight in the model. I mean, 90% of the images I shared were, you know, from the side or the top. So I did not see the point of modeling a bunch of geometry is not going to be visible. I did talk about back when I first posted this, that maybe I'd go in and just as a separate group model, the, the little pieces for the bottoms of the plates. But obviously that was not a thing that I thought was important because I never did it. So yeah. So again, we're talking about a software that's primarily used for real world fabrication, for you know, architectural, interior design. Uh, if you're fabricating, we're talking about things like furniture, that kind of thing. Why would we spend time talking about modeling something like this? And I'm gonna say right now that creating this model was probably some of the best learning I have done for SketchUp since I originally picked it up. Um, I mean, I just, I thought differently about how to create models of things inside of SketchUp. I thought about how to organize a model and how to uh, group and use outliner, how to use tags. Um, I thought a lot about what's the appropriate amount of detail to put into something, how many how many edges should I use on a circle? Uh, and, you know, for a stud, I use 12, I think. And then for smaller details, my circle gets smaller. Bigger details like this dish right here, the number of edges goes up. So there was a lot of thought that went into this. Um, so that's, that is, I, I always tell people, people ask, you know, how do I get, there's this thing when you learn, and I'm going to, I'm going to put this on everything, not just SketchUp, but you get to a certain point where you, you learn, 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 and then you just kind of stall out. You, you hit this plateau and because you know how to do the things that you do and you stop learning new stuff. So what I always tell people is if you get to that plateau, then it's time to model something else. It doesn't mean go get a different job. It, you know, if you're using it for work, keep doing what you're doing for work. That's good. But in your free time, evenings, weekends, lunch times, find something else to model that interests you and go make those models. Cause you're going to get outside of you. You say you do, you know, you remodel kitchens. 
and that's what you do. So you're, you're constantly drawing kitchens over and over again. You've got 3D warehouse worked out inside and out. You got a database of components that you use for cabinets. You know how to go in and take existing model or existing dimensions and whip them into a, a, a skeleton of a building quickly. That's awesome. You get really good at that. But as soon as you get really, you get really good at that. And then that's kind of where you stop growing is because you're doing the same thing over and over again. So go find something you want to model. You want to model uh, an RC car or uh, an airplane or, you know, jewelry, whatever it is, go find that. Start modeling that piece. And it's, if it's something you're interested in, you're gonna have more fun doing it. And you're going to break outside of that. I don't want to call it a rut, but the, 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 the standard of modeling you're normally working in. So that's kind of where this whole idea came from was it was something different. Uh, it was a challenge and uh, I ended up learning a lot. Oh, yes. Yeah, I think that one one of the things that sets like the super pro SketchUp modelers apart from like, you know, really good is model organization and, you know, um, using outliner, using tags and being able to filter by stuff for visibility to keep the model light, but also, you know, have everything in a set place where you can easily access it and people can, you know, use your model and uh, can figure out how to, you know, manipulate the geometry pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and Lego seems like a perfect opportunity for that where like, look, it's very structural, it's very hierarchical, you got the bags, you know, that you can mm -hmm. filter by and, uh, you know, these repeatable elements that you can employ uh, components and stuff like that for. So yeah, it's, uh, it's cool to see how much, you know, people know you as the SketchUp guy, you know, a lot of stuff, but to take on a, uh, a project of this uh, caliber and then to see how much you learned is, uh, is pretty cool. Oh yeah. It was cool. It was, it was great. And the, the nice thing, uh, Dave was just saying in the chats that he, he tells his students, woodworking students to model the furniture around them, which is awesome. Cause you have the real thing there to compare your model against, you know, that's another thing that like, if I'm going to model a table or something, I should model this table I'm here at because I can check and see if I got it right or not. <laughs> you know, if I'm making something yeah. up, you can't really get it wrong. Lego was kind of nice because you have instructions there. So, you know, there, there's a thing you're following. It's precise. So it works or it doesn't. And then, uh, like I said, you kind of have a framework for how to organize, which I think you're right. I think one of the things that a lot of people are challenged by is how to organize a model. If I'm drawing a house, how do I break it down? Well, you're not going to know until you get done and you know how it's getting used. And a lot of times by then it's too late. So like I said, <laughs> there are some things with this model where I learned from doing it wrong, how to do it better next time. And that's actually what I want to show you is uh, another Lego model. So I'm going to go ahead and close this because it's huge and I want to have it open if I don't have to. Uh, and Good then call. I'm going to go to. And people pointing out in the chat, uh, rightfully so, that. Being outside of your comfort zone is where, uh, That's where growth happens. Where growth happens. Yeah. So absolutely. Yeah. Um, so this is the model that I'm working on right now. It's called Lego Fire Brigade. If you guys have ever seen the building uh, series, it's a bunch of Lego scale models. So it's not like real life, you know, scale against real life. It's like for for minis to walk around in, but they have a whole bunch of buildings. So I started modeling those. This is the one I'm working on right now. And I just want to show a little bit of the organization I ended up creating. So by the time I got to this model, I kind of abandoned tags. Tags weren't doing anything for me anymore because I was using outliner for everything. So mm -hmm. what I ended up creating, here, get down here a little ways. Here we go. So I have uh, the bags. So bag one, I'm actually working on bag two right now. And then in each bag, it, each step is its own thing. So if I go grab I don't know, at random, I'm just going to go grab this step. So I'm in bag one, which is this bottom half of the building. If I go into step six, let's hide everything else. Well, I turn, let me turn off bags. Let me change. Let me actually change where I'm at because I'm not going to go into bag one. I'm going to go. There comes a point in every person's life where seeing something organized so well is just undeniably sexy. <laughs> it is pretty cool. <laughs> so if I look at this, so you can see here's, here's this, uh, this bag. Why is my, my, sh my shortcuts not working to hide everything else? Let me, mm, that's not going to work. 
Not sure what's going on there. Oh yeah, there we go. Come so on, now, keys don't fail me now. That's right. Uh, so each of these steps, so this is one step in the booklet, and that ends up in its own group. And then those groups will end up inside of this group, which will be bag number two, the second half. And then like I said, separate from that was bag one. And then separate from bag one, we had, it wasn't actually in a bag, but uh, there's a little fire trick here. Oh boy, hold on. There we go. This fire truck was its own uh, before bag one. I don't know. So there's some interesting pieces on there. Yeah, there's some weird ones. This guy right here. Let me let me drill in here a little bit. This thing. Whew. So one of the things I want to talk like about. Normal. <laughs> Make a dynamic component for that. There is some. So <laughs> I, I mean, if you look at it, I really tried to keep it light. So I tried to keep yeah. it as few edges as possible, but. This, I mean, other than like this height, this height, and then the stud placement, uh, the rest of it, there's no geometry. So one of the things I want to talk about is is how I go about these odd shapes as well, because that's a very cool process. Um, but yeah, let's step back out of here. So something, I don't know, I got to figure out where this brick is supposed to be, because I don't think it's supposed to be on the ground like that. Um, but yeah, so I kind of stepped brick. away from messing with tags at all and do all of my visibility work through through Outliner at this point. It was just quicker, it was easier. Uh, just, just, and that's that's when you're, when you're doing something like this, the whole point of using these tools is to make it easier to access. One of the things I've been doing, so when, when I'm actually actively modeling, I could come over here to the component browser and grab pieces and pull them in, but because of the number of bricks that are potentially going to be used, I would spend all my time either searching the list or scrolling to find the piece I want. Uh, so what I end up doing is I have one copy of every brick I've made so far just sitting right here on the ground. Kind of like when you know you get the Legos, you open the bag and you dump it all out right there. That's what this is. This is just all the pieces somewhat organized. And so what I'll do yeah, is a little when more I... organized than dumped out bag. That's true. I've seen <laughs> I've seen some people go through and they actually knoll out their their Legos and they line them all up and stuff like I just that's not me I don't have that thing, um, <laughs> so what what I'll do then is I'll open a PDF on my second monitor and I'll say okay for this step I need one of these 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 and one of these and then I will option copy those over to the side. I'll put those all right, right now. I'll just grab all of them and then put them into a group and then name the group, whatever step it is. Then once that's done, I'll come into this group. I will uh, color them. So I'll just go to paint bucket and here I have, so it's hard to see now that it's, it's out of focus, but let me get that out of the way. I have this little thing, which is all the, the basic colors of the bricks I've hit so far. And this is, mm -hmm. I'll show you the series that I'm working on. So these are all translucent colors. So if I look under here, there's actually nothing to see, but these are all 50% transparency. These are all solid colors. Um, and something, so something to note, I don't, and I mentioned this in other models, I rarely ever use black uh, in any of my colors because as soon as you put black on, it, it's hard to tell black apart from the edges. So like if I have a brick that's black, I'd have to go in and make change the edges to white or something like that. It's too much work. So I use this like 80% gray as black, this 50% gray as dark gray, and then this light, like maybe 20% gray as the lighter gray. So my bricks end up being a little bit lighter than they are in real life. So like if I look at this, you can see you can see the detail of the edges here because it's not pure black. Pure black would just all just just be the black shape and that would be it so something i've just learned if i want to actually see what i'm modeling and look at it uh rather than having those black blobs i use that that dark gray but i'll i'll use those colors those samples to pull from color my bricks and then position those bricks in the model uh inside the group so i'll come in here like this and then if this brick goes up on top of the top i'll grab it right here come up here and then i'll put it where it needs to go and that just happens one step after another. Um, like real life. Just Yeah. <laughs> like I said, the big difference is I only have to grab one of these plates. And if it copies, I just go option, click, 3x. And 
spoiling there a little go. bit spoiled right there with that. click it right into place that's right um and then like i said the nice thing is because all this stuff is put together at this very specific aspect ratio all the numbers align perfectly you can see here see that line right lined up perfectly this line lined up perfectly this one is directly in the middle so if i look at the center of this line you can see it's lined up right there it's really cool. And it's just one of the things that, so as a designer, you know, if you have that design mindset, Lego is just so cool because it works. Somebody, somebody already did all the work and you can just use it. Very satisfying to have it just slot oh, exactly sure. in place. <laughs> it's nice when everything works. Um, so yeah. Simon one of, was uh, calling out how cool your color palette is. He says it's a stroke of genius. Yeah. So. And then as I hit new colors, if something new comes up that I haven't used before, I'll just drop it on here. These are just, it's, it's just a, a face broken into a bunch of rectangles. So if there's new colors. I'll just add them on the end and this will eventually grow, I suppose. Uh, thank you. Um, so yeah, so that's the kind of stuff that this is the most recent model I have been working on. Also probably for a couple of months because I do it for a little while and then get tired of doing it. And then walk away and then come back later i was like oh i should finish the fire brigade for this live stream that's what i said on monday yeah nah there are forces that we don't understand that's true. i think uh this can be your life's work you know there we go <laughs> so so this model right here i mentioned that uh this that that fire brigade is part of a series so what i've been doing i'm like how can i one up what stupid thing can I do to punish myself uh, that would be bigger than the biggest SketchUp model that was the Millennium Falcon? And I thought, what if I just start modeling a series of models and put them all together? So, because because that's the kind of guy I am, I started this model I'm calling Lego Street. And this is so far uh, three of those building series. The, uh, the next one will snap into place right up to that one. And... <laughs> Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> this this is there's a lot of stuff going on here. So yeah, so each of these is uh, a separate uh, kit, its own instructions, and they're actually intended in real life. They have these little little holes and and uh, pins, so you actually do snap them together to create like city blocks and stuff. So, uh, and a lot of these are out of print. Like they don't they don't make these kits anymore because these are from many years back. So it's kind of a fun way to collect those. Uh, and again, it's why the collection of bricks is, is starting to grow the way that it is. So yeah, this ended up, this is significantly larger than the Millennium Falcon, uh, was already. So that's pretty awesome. It looks like I, I'm sure there are people that have like, you know, we did the model trains series of live models. I'm sure there's people who have like, you know, tabletop setups of whatever, four by eight, all Lego city <laughs> and train and a, you know, everything going on little, uh, so here you go. Yeah. Don't stop till you've filled up an entire, you know, dinner table. <laughs> yeah. Just, just <laughs> go for it. Um, yeah. So this is, <laughs> this is kind of, uh, the idea. This is, this is where this is all going. And so far it's been fun. Like I said, and, and it's, it's, I, the problem I run into, I'll be honest, the problem I run into when I do this is I will find a way to do it better in the future and go, should I go back and clean up that old? And no, 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 you shouldn't. <laughs> Don't go back. <laughs> Don't try to redo it. This is in the past. Move forward. Move on down the street. That's what I say. No, um, look, it's like, don't look down. Just keep yeah. moving forward. Wiley Coyote. Blinders on. Get yeah. it done. <laughs> keep it going. Yeah. So this this one, you can see. I know, I know we're in a live stream, so it's not always perfectly smooth anyhow. But even on my computer, as I'm spinning it, I am it's stuttering. It's, it's definitely, uh, it is a bigger file and I am seeing a little bit of challenge to my, uh, my computer with this guy. Do you know how big the file is? I know people are always interested in. I could probably file find size. out that. Um, I'll look, let's here, let's, let's look right now at model info and we'll see. All right. So it's got just over 2 million edges over three quarter of a million faces, 25,000 component instances. So hot dog. That's made that's made up of 243 different brick types. So yeah, it's a big one. It's a big one. Yeah, that is big. Um, and speaking of uh, 
statistics there, Studio RT Cool is mentioning how it's nice to have the pieces off to the side so that you can purge unused and make sure that uh, there's still one um, one instance of each component still in the model. That is another reason I did that. That's exactly right because uh, I I actually lost one of the one of these houses one of the one of the buildings over here. I actually lost a couple bricks because I did that. I, I instead of copying, I grabbed one off the floor and put it on, uh, and then deleted that geometry. Or something I can't remember. I did something so that I totally lost uh, a brick. So it uh -huh. happens. You're thinking. You're thinking. See. All right. So let's close this. Let's get back to just creating the the. So that was fun. I, you guys, I want to point out too that like. We love these live streams and we're never sure like what's the best thing we should do what should we spend time on and we're just we keep trying stuff and if, if you guys are enjoying this kind of thing where we look at models let us know uh because there's always more models to look at so yeah 100 percent. all right so a couple things so there's three things i want to look at one is i want to look at just modeling one of these bricks i showed you how i took a one by and made it into a two by but let's say we want to make like a, a a two by two brick or two by three brick, something like that. We'll look at how to create that geometry. Uh, then this question comes up all the time. Whenever I've shown some of those other models, everybody always goes, do you use dynamic components for that? And I, I have stories about that. We'll talk about it and I'm gonna create a dynamic component for some Lego. We'll do that next. And then the third thing is, what do you do with those weird pieces that don't, they're, they're not bricks, they're something else. Um, you know, Lego has like cats and owls and lizards and <laughs> hair and like these other just totally crazy geometry where like this much of it lines up because it's got a stud on it or something. And then all the rest of it's just sculpted geometry. Um, right. And I want to talk about how to go about that. Uh, and Tyson is going to be on here next week talking a little more Lego. And this is one of the fun things I I. I am so excited that Tyson is doing live streams now um, and not for anything selfish. Like I get half the month off of live streaming. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I actually spend those times usually watching what Tyson's doing, but I think it's really cool that, uh, you know, Tyson and I do things differently and that we get to come to you guys and go, here's a way to do it. And here's a different way to do it. It's pretty fun. So he's going to actually hang out and talk about, uh, you know, taking files from some of those third parties that create Legos and bring them in and uh, converting them into SketchUp files. So that's going to be a fun one uh, for sure. Yeah, don't miss it. Um, all right, so let's talk about this. Let's say, let's say I want to, well, let me just draw this, redraw this one real quick. So like I said, everything is in that basic geometry. So if I was to draw this brick, I would probably start with a 20 by 20, which is that outside square. And then if I raise that up, if I'm going up to a brick height, it's going to be 24. If I'm going to a plate height, it's going to be 8. So I'll go ahead and pull it up 24. All right, so that gives me the basic geometry already. Down here at the bottom, if I offset this by 4, and now if I push it up, remember this is 24 tall, so I, I need some thickness, that top piece. So I would just come up 20, enter, and there we go. So I look at x-ray. That's what I've created. So all the geometry is basically a unit of that. I'll be honest, I have never gone through and drawn another shape from scratch other than this one by and this one by because everything else that's a plate or a brick is a derivative of this. So I will always do what I did right here with this one by two and grab this and say, okay, this needs to move over uh, 40 to give me 60 total. And then this needs to move over 20 to give me a two by. And then I'll grab my stud. Oh, which is, it's a weird shape because these were drawn a different, I'm gonna grab this one, I'm just gonna copy it. Now turn um, it to if you, Did you address this earlier, but how many sides for the circle did you use for the stud? So the stud, I believe, let's double check. I think it's, uh, uh, 24. So that's a standard size circle. So okay. everything, is, which is actually probably a little high considering most times you see it, you see it about that big. So I probably could come into that and make it even smaller if I wanted to. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't, but that, that would definitely be uh, doable. 
All right, so when, when I do that, so this piece now, I just dropped it right on the corner. When this piece sits down on top of the stud, there has to be room for that wall. So this stud moves over this way four, it moves over this way four, and then this one is copied this way 20. And then both of these are copied this way 20. And this time, in this case, because it's two by three, that's two X. And then that gets made into a two by three brick component. And that's what every brick I've created ends up being created like. So let's finish, finish the, finish him. Right. Don't have it yet. All right. On the list, add it to the list. Yep. Um, and that's Send it to my email. There, there you go. Yep. If I want to turn this into a plate. So a lot of, a lot of this kind of stuff, right? I'm going to copy that over here and then I'm going to make unique. I'm going to change this from a brick to a plate. And then I can come under here, shift this up, Oop, not 20, but 16. All right. And there I got that piece now. I'll drop it down to the same height. Just drop it down here. There we go. Um, these are big compared to Naraj. Are these duplos? We should probably here. We'll just now they're perfect scale. Yes. That's why we have a scale figure, everybody. <laughs> to make the Legos yeah, look right. right. Okay, I don't know how big they are. Uh, somebody speaking of scale figure, mm -hmm. Aaron uh, in the chat said that you should replace the scale figure with a Lego minifig. I'm not opposed to that idea. I guess if you did it at actual scale, then it <laughs> kind of would be hard to uh, use it for scale like, compared to a building. But that's true. It would be it would be hard to really stuff. guess if a full size building was right against something this big. So down here in the corner, <laughs> looking up at a house, going, "Yeah, that's about what a minifig would be." Um, Don asked, "Why do you model the inside like inset of the geometry?" He says, do you actually ever see that? Wouldn't it just save file size if you left the brick solid? That's, I mean, again, if you're if you're really concerned about that, that's not a bad idea. Um, I'm I, What I see a lot of is, you know, I think Lego does a lot of this kind of stuff where you end up seeing underneath or inside occasionally. And rather than having mm. that just be a full flat brick, like I said, I didn't want to go to the point where I, I put those little circles or the, the little pegs that pop out or anything like that. So I didn't do that, but I guess it's enough geometry, but you're right. I mean, if I was really trying to be more conscious about it, that would make a lot of sense. Uh, one of the other things that I've come up with too is uh, just placement. Sometimes I'm trying to think of an example. I feel like I've done this before, but I've actually used these corners as placement points for certain bricks because they were, were nesting together or something like that. But it's not mm -hmm. a bad thought. I mean, if you're if you're really trying to optimize and you have a huge model, uh, it might not be a bad idea to leave that extra geometry out because it does add up, you're right. Although you're sort of in the middle. Uh, the forum thread that I linked in the um, description of the video, uh, Basel Command, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce the username, but on the forum thread, he models like all the true details like you'd have in an actual Lego brick. And it's like, Okay, that's kind of maybe overkill for what you yeah. potentially need. And having to just completely flat bottom is maybe not enough. So I feel like it's a good <laughs> in, between. Uh, in between what you've got here. Yeah. Well, and I have Depends seen what you're going for. I have seen models and people have asked, you know, why don't I have little, why doesn't it say Lego on here? And that right there, I mean, it, just putting Lego on here and then push pulling it up is going to be more geometry than I got on the whole screen right now. So I was very intentional. I didn't even for a second consider doing that. I thought for a second, I'm like, well, what if I took an image and I made it part of the component, but then I'm like, as soon as I color it, it's not going to work. So I, I ended up not bothering with it at all. But uh, if you were going for like true Lego, like you're going to render some random Lego blocks, that would be a key piece. You'd have to put those words on there. Somebody in the chat earlier was mentioning about... Um... Infr a copyright infringement there. Like if I 3D print these, am I going to get in trouble with Lego? I figure that's why you like had, you know, it's like filing off the serial number on a gun. You like filed <laughs> off the logo, the uh, Lego logo so that's that you true. don't get uh, encroached. Or Technically, whatever. these are three-dimensional plastic building toy blocks. <laughs> Mandatory disclaimer. That's right. 
Yeah. No, we have a legal team reviewed us. We, we, nothing we're, we, I mean, we actually have a relationship with Lego. We know some people over at Lego and, and our intention here is not to bypass. We think it's an awesome product, uh, speaking for the live team and for members of, of the bigger team, good stuff. We love them. Uh, we appreciate what they do and they encourage the way they encourage just creativity and, and making, and it's, it's awesome. So this has nothing to do with like 3d print instead. I, that's not a, that's not where I'm going with this. Uh, they know I'm just being silly. That's right. No, I did. I thought this was a fun way too to go through and model some kits. Like I said, they're out of print. I could never actually go back and get that first SketchUp Buildings kit unless I found it, you know, secondhand from a collector for like a thousand dollars or something like that. Right. Uh, yeah. But I still got to experience black market, it. market, man. Yeah, that's right. Like, yeah. No, yeah. I that's said cool. it fell off a truck. I don't know. <laughs> All right. So I want to look at because. So I'm doing this for two reasons. One, people have asked over and over again, when are you going to do dynamic components on a live stream? And I stay away from it because I'm not good at it. I mean, I've done several videos on, on dynamic components and I practice over and over and over again to do it. And usually during recording, something goes wrong and I have to go back and figure out what it is. So I have to re-record or edit. Uh, so I generally stay away from dynamic components and not because they're difficult. They have very clear rules. It's just, it's a brain thing for me. So <laughs> it's, it's the reason I try to steer clear. I try to steer clear of math for the same reason, because it's just, it's not the way this thing works up here. So having rules said that. Rules and math. I know. Have no rules. <laughs> the worst. So I'm going to go through and we're going to create a dynamic component of a brick. Uh, it's going to be a one by brick. So, you know, like these guys right here, but we're going to make it adjustable from a one by one up to a one by 10. That's the brick we're going to make right now. All right. So I love it. DCs, 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 DCs. Whoa! All right. <laughs> so what you've all been waiting for. Yeah. So if I'm going to, I'm going to throw a disclaimer here. If I was to do something like we were talking about, like get rid of this bottom right here. This DC would be super simple because it would be a rectangle that stretches to specific lengths and I'd be done. Um, I'm going to say for the dynamic one I want to create, I want to maintain this value in the bottom because more learning is to be had. So for those of you who are not familiar how a dynamic component works, a dynamic component is a set of geometry that you can affect by scaling or offering user interface to change the geometry and it goes through and it redraws itself based on that input. So, uh, you know, some people talk about parametric modeling or uh, value-based modeling or something like that. I don't know. That's kind of the idea here. So I'm going to put a number in and based on the number I put in, it's going to automatically go, oh, it should be this long or it should be this long. And that's going to happen just with a, a quick UI. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to get rid of this. So the thing I got to do here is I do have to break it into pieces and you'll, you'll see why. So I'm going to ask you to bear with me in the, this first five minutes or so as I create the initial pieces, because as soon as I start changing values, you'll see why I have to break it up. I can't just do one solid piece like this group was because the way dynamic components work, uh, it would deform that geometry. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to come over here and draw a rectangle on the ground that represents the end piece or the left side of this one by one brick. I'm going to model the one by one, and then we're going to put components on it to make it one by one up to one by 10. So one end piece here is going to be four by 20. And then that is going to be 20 tall. So that is essentially, if I look underneath, that's this, this chunk right here is what I just created. I'm going to grab all of that. I'm going to make it a component and I'm going to call it the left end. These names only have to mean things to me, by the way. All right. I'm going to take that piece and I'm going to option copy it and I'm going to move it over here 16 inches. Wait, let me check something. 12 plus four. Yes. No, not 16 inches, just 16. This uh, model that I'm working in currently is in decimal centimeters. Um, 
I could do it in inches or something like that. The problem with inches is that sooner or later inches become feet and that's based on 12 units. Uh, by modeling in metric like this, all of my units are just stack evenly. So I don't ever have to worry about uh, how many units something is. It's the unit is just a unit. So in this case, I'm using centimeters. Um, the other th reason is in dynamic components, the native unit that is used is centimeters also. So we'll see that in a second. All right, now here's, here's the thing that people run into in dynamic components all the time. I wanna mention it right now. These are both a copy of the same thing, left end and left end. If I go in and make this into dynamic component and try to tell it where left end is, it's gonna grab all the copies of left end and move them around. It's, it's gonna cause issues. So one of the first things I have to do is if I have separate pieces, I have to make sure they are totally separate pieces. What I do, peace of mind, I will take this, I will explode it, and I will make it a new component called the right end. You can try make unique, but I have had instances where copies that were created with make unique somewhere inside still had reference to that original component and it caused nightmares for me literally and figuratively later on in the process. So I tend to always try to explode and make brand new components of my pieces as I, as I create them. All right, so I need to make a front and back. So same thing, I'm gonna come over here, 12 by four. I'm going to pull that up to 20 right here, triple click, make component, and I'm gonna call this the front. And again, these names just have to make sense to me. What I call them doesn't really matter. I'm gonna grab that. Option copied over here, same thing, explode. When you explode something, immediately afterwards, everything's still selected. So I can just right click and I can say make component again. So it's a two-step process, but it assures that you're not gonna have any problems later on. And this is going to be called the back. All right, one more piece, that's gonna be the top. And this should be a 20 by 20 square, it is. And it should be four deep, four, triple click, make component, call it the top. All right, at that point, I've got the base geometry. So if I grab this brick and bring it over here and set it right next to it, yeah, everything lines up real nice. Put that back. I'm gonna grab this, all these pieces, make it into a new component. So component, dynamic components are generally made of components nested in components. You can drill down and set attributes of components one level deep. So I can tell it, from the outside from my brick, I can say how long should the, the front face be? And I can, I'm gonna mess with that stuff as I do this, but they do have to be components inside components. So I'm gonna call this my one by one D brick. All right, you gotta write all that down because I'm not gonna remember any of it, but here we go. That's right. Hey, that's okay. This will be recorded and you can view it in slow-mo later on. Yeah, Listen I have to a feeling this is gonna be the most most rewatched part of the episode, but I love it. <laughs> Valerie said she's taking notes. So yeah, that's a good. Maybe we should put in a little, uh, a bookmark at whatever this was one hour in. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. You can, you can do that. All right. So this is my one by one D brick, which actually it should really just be called. We can actually change that to just this is a one by brick. I didn't want to call it one by one brick. Cause I already got one of those right here, but this is just my one by brick. Now, I'm going to right click on here, go to dynamic components, and I'm gonna open a couple things. I'm gonna open my component options, set that right here, and I'm going to go grab my component attributes, which I'll actually, you know, let's, let's, let's move some stuff out of the way, and I'll go put that over here. Collapse, collapse. That's right, out of the way, you, 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 I, you. Um, <laughs> that, was a, that was a developer joke. All right, <laughs> so when I bring up my component attributes, I have component attributes for the brick as a whole, and you can see set in here are the pieces that are part of that larger component. So these are the subcomponents, these are the five sides I made, and then the one larger one. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna make a couple, couple controls here. Actually, I'm just gonna make one control. I'm gonna say add. And the thing I want to do is I want to tell it how long this brick is this direction. That's along the red axis. So if I look down here, it does call out things X, Y, and Z, 
But if you hover over them and watch the little, little icon in the upper left corner as I come down here, if I get to length X, I can see that it has a little red arrow. It's I know it's hard to see on my screen, but it does. There's a little red arrow oh. there. So I know the red Lex, <laughs> Lex X. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Hold on, give my tongue cool, a though. second to review, right. redo, redo. <laughs> oh boy, hasn't happened yet. Just wrap it up and sling it out again. All right, tongue has rebooted. Uh, Len X is what we're looking for there. All right, so currently it's 20 centimeters. When I see this grayed out value like that, that's telling me that's the value that's in there right now. So this, there's nothing connected to it. That just happens to be the overall length along the red axis of my group or my components. What I want to do is I'm going to hit this little fly out right here. Uh, I have units. I'm just going to leave it in centimeters. That's fine. And the user can currently not see this attribute. I'm going to say I want the user to be able to see it, not just see it, but edit it. But I want them to edit in a certain way. I'm going to tell them they can edit it by selecting from a list. I could come in and say they can set the length of the, of the Lego. But the problem with doing that is then I'm going to let them set it to any length they want. I want them to only be able to set to a very specific length based on the number of studs long this brick is. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put a couple options in. So I'm going to say this is a one by brick. So for a one by one, my value should be 20. A one by two, my value is going to be 40. One by three, value is going to be 60. And one by four, my value is going to be 80. And then there's not common one by five, sevens, or nines. So I'm going to jump from four to six and put in 120. Eight is going to be 180 or 160. And then 10 is going to be 200. Yes, I did practice that math ahead of time. Don't you guys get excited? Uh, hey, prepared stuff. I know. I sat in front of the mirror this morning and went, two times 20 is 40. Three times 20 is 60. <laughs> I practiced. I Appreciate practiced that. I'm the, sorry. Uh, <laughs> multiplication tables back out. And, That's right. Uh, yeah, they're in there somewhere. You just got to kind of mine for them. It's, it's, they get deeper every year, too. It's a problem. All right. Yeah. So uh, go ahead. Peggy <laughs> pointed out that there's sort of a, a change in your voice. And he says there's an edge to your voice now that you started doing dynamic components. It's like you're in battle mode. You're like, okay, now here we go. We're getting a... Anytime I, we get the parameters going, you know, we're going to get... <laughs> like I said, we're not we're not sculpting anymore. We're, we're you know, this is machining. We're, we're, we're specific dimensions based on specific things. So... Don't mess up. Thank you, sir. Very precise. All right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change my label to length because len x doesn't sound like a great name for a, a, a value attribute and then i'm gonna say apply all right so when i come back out here i still see the 20 right here but if i look over here at my component options i have this one if i drop it down there's two three four six eight ten let's go ahead and switch it to two and watch it watch it happens to our brick and then apply all right so that just changed. If I look over here at the value, it changed to 40. So it's the right length. But you can probably already see it stretched, but it stretched. It didn't actually get bigger. It just took what was already there and just stretched out. Like if you grab something with scale and just pull it, it doesn't do what you expect it to do. These walls should stay the same width, right? So that's what happened there. Not a big deal. This is what we have to play with dynamic components. And this is why this is not a monolithic piece of geometry. This is why I broke everything into smaller pieces because I'm gonna have to go back and tell certain geometry, certain dimensions stay this size no matter how big this gets. So the only thing I can change with this is this length this way. So the only dimensions I have to lock into place are these dimensions, the widths of these guys right here. So this is my left and right end. So here I have left and right end. So I'm going to go ahead and add to the left end. I'm going to add a, again, we want the length. So this up here, X, Y, Z is position. So that says where relative to the whole thing does this sit? For this left end, if I don't put any value in, it's going to keep it at zero, which is right here. So I can say, okay, don't worry about position. All I'm concerned with is the length and that length. 
I want to be equal to four always. So you can see right now it's telling me again with those little with that gray value that it's currently four. If I come in here and I tell it equal four enter, that tells it no matter what, always keep it at four. So if I come in here now and I change to two and I hit apply, look what happens. That stayed at four, even though this stretched out. That's what I need this end to do also. So let's do that. Let's come in here and actually I don't need to come in. I can just do it from the outside with it selected. Right end, add the attribute, uh, length x equals four. And watch what happens when I do this. It's gonna update instantly. It's the right size, but it's in the wrong mm. location. So what I need to do is I need to tell it exactly where to put this end relative to the geometry of the entire thing. So I'm going to add one more attribute, and that's going to be my X position. All right. So currently, it's at 32. Why 32? Does anybody know? Um, I don't know. Okay, I know. I'm playing. <laughs> the reason it's at 32... 32 is the full length of the brick, which is 40, minus what was the width of that piece, because it doubled in size, so the thickness of the piece doubled in size, and that's eight less. So the left side of this is at 32 centimeters or units from the end. So what I'm gonna tell it to do is I'm gonna tell it, make it the full length of the brick minus one width, minus those four inches. So what I'm gonna do is I can't just give it a value because the value is gonna change, right? based on what I put in over here. So what I'm gonna say is it's equal to whatever this value is, minus four, and hit enter. And there we go, now it goes on the outside. Now, no matter what okay. I change this to, okay. so if I bump it up to three, it's gonna go, okay, go all the way to the end, and then come back in four. So no matter what I do, it'll always be on the outside end. There's different ways you could play with this too. So if I come into this, this piece, I can see that my my axes for this is on this side. I could change the axes so it's over here, and then these values that I'm changing will position it based on that location. Um, but that just seemed like an extra step that wasn't worth it when I could just do a super simple formula right there. Yeah, interesting. I like how it's coming together one step at a time. Two things from the chat here. Edwin tuning in for the first time, first SketchUp Live from Panama. Que pasa? Well, Good yes. to see you. Thanks for tuning in. And... We have a few people mentioning for you too. Shame. You got the shirt, but you can't read waiting. it yourself. I, I I told myself I wasn't gonna do it till somebody said something this time, and I think well I mean we spent the first forty minutes looking at other models, so I understand why I didn't get that earlier. But uh, thank you guys. <laughs> I was actually starting to sweat a little bit. I'm like, what if something goes wrong? That would suck. <laughs> that would be bad. All right. Uh, here we are. Okay, so we're getting to it. Uh, I'm going to go back to two just because the math is going to be easier to check. Now we need to do with these edges. We need our, our front and our back to sit all the way back here and extend all the way out. So let's start with the front. We're going to come in here. Get this bigger. <clears throat> front. I'll start with position. So my position on my X will always be equal to four. Because the so we so this is kind of nice. Uh, we don't ever have to worry about the thickness of this dimension changing in this model because it will always be four. It'll never be anything but four. If I ever have a value where this changes, then that that four value might be relative to another attribute like I have up here. But in this case, it's always four. So you can see that pulled it all the way back. I'm just gonna do both of them one after another. So I'll go ahead and add x to the back also, and then also make that equal to four. Now, we got a question. Mm -hmm. Are dynamic components available in the free slash web version? The answer to that is no. They're not. So dynamic components are actually run as a extension. So they actually add on to the base functionality. And the only place you can run extensions at this point is in the pro version. So you do need pro to use extensions. Yep, that's right. And then a couple of people mentioned that this looks similar to coding and Valerie said she's having CSS flashbacks. Sorry. Yeah. It's if you if you understand coding, then dynamic components are going to come to you way easier than they come to me because <laughs> so <laughs> my dad owns a software company and back when I was just getting out of high school he's like, "Oh, you should try writing code. You should be looking into developing." And I, I think he was doing it a, 
you know, a place of, of love and caring was coming from his heart going, I see this being the future. This is going to be a big deal. What he didn't take into account is his, his little boy was not a mathy, sciencey, computer sciencey kind of guy. He's not, and that's not how this thing, you guys already know. So, uh, yeah, I tried, I tried writing code and <laughs> I stopped. <laughs> Yeah, it takes a certain kind of mind, a certain kind of Absolutely. skill set. Full yeah. respect for somebody who can do that. It's not me. All right. Uh, let's. So, so we got these in the right spot. Now we got to get them the right length. So I'm going to come back to this front one, and I'm going to add uh, length X. And again, I'm going to put a quick formula in here because I'm going to come in and highlight all this. And I'm going to say it's equal to this total length minus two widths, which would be eight. And if I do that, it should run up to the end. Beautiful. Again, we'll do it on the back side. So I'm going to say add length X, triple click equals this overall brick length minus four minus four is a total of minus eight. Enter. And there we go. And I like doing it this way. I like because I like double checking. I like having this over here so I can just check real quick. Oh, three looks good. Let's drop back down to one. Perfect, beautiful, we've got it. So there's two things I wanna, I wanna talk about at this point that we still gotta do. Three, save, that's one. Mm -hmm. Second is we gotta talk about getting studs on there. And third, we gotta do something about these extra lines, right? There's too many edges here, this shouldn't be happening. Um, so let's, let's start with a stud. I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna copy that stud. I'm going to come into context here and I'm going to paste that stud. I'm going to paste it right at what would be zero in the component. Oh, something else to point out. My top, I didn't do anything because again, I don't have a control to make it taller. So I never have to worry about it getting thicker than four. I don't have to worry about it getting wider because I don't, again, don't have a control to make it wider it's always going to be the same length as whatever's in here. So I don't have to put anything in there. That, that, that rectangle is just going to stretch as I change the end. So no values have to get put in for the top. All right. Now I have this stud. So a couple things have to happen with the stud. First thing is it has to get put in the right spot. And then we have to make copies based on the overall length that is established by this value right here. So there's gonna be two locations I'm gonna put in. I'm gonna add uh, a position X, and I'm gonna add a position Y, and then down here, I'm gonna add copies. So right now, we haven't created any user-defined values in our dynamic component. You have the ability to go in and put anything you want into a dynamic component. And that can be a number used for a calculation elsewhere. Um, it, it goes, it gets heady. And that's, that's the same. This is like the development uh, light programming kind of stuff that you can get into. We're just using stock values thus far. All right, so there's two, two positions here. The first one is how far off the edge to move up this way. That will always be the same, right? That's going to be equal to four. That's right there. All right. Now, before we can position them along the brick, I do have to figure out how many copies I need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this is equal to this value up here. Here, let me collapse some of these guys so I can see my... Uh, my top value. I don't actually need any of these right now. So the number of copies is going to be equal to the number or the length up here divided by 20. Does that make sense? So if it's, if it's 20 divided by 20 is one copy, 40 divided by 20 is two copies. So I'm going to say equals this divided by 20. Whoops. I put two divided by 20. Okay, so we're real close. When you make a copy of something in SketchUp, the original doesn't count as a copy, right? So if I say copy times two, I have the original, then two more. So I don't actually, this number should actually be one lower than it is. So I'm gonna say is minus one. Uh, 
Okay. Does that make sense? I don't know what you tell me. Yes, we have people in the chat following along. Okay. I just want to make sure it makes sense because I tripped on this as I was trying to make it. I'm like, why why am I getting an extra copy? Every every brick I made had an extra stud sitting 20 units off the end. Because mm -hmm. this is number of copies of the original. So yeah. You have the original and then copy. Yeah. So you have to take one off. Yeah. Make, right. Yeah, makes sense. All right. Now where's it gonna sit? Um, so it's going to be spaced out at 20. So based on what copy it is, it's going to move over 20. So if I say equals copy times 20, that's going to say based on which copy it is, it's going to move over 20. But that's coming off the edge. So what I had to come in here is I'm going to grab this copy times 20. I'm going to put it in parentheses. And I'm going to say it is 4 plus copies times 20. If I hit enter right now and it scoots over and in the middle of the brick, I did at least some of this right. Ba ba boom. Yes. All right. Not not too quick, guys. This could still fall apart horribly. Let's save. <laughs> All right. Smart. Save. So what should happen right now is if I come in here and I change to a two, it should, we already know it's gonna get to the right length, but what should happen is this stud should stay where it is and a new copy should spawn 20 units to the right. Let's see. Two. Apply. You wrecked it! <laughs> Boom. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I would say. This is what this is how I do it. This is my system, guys. Bear with me. All right. So there's a couple things, right? Length, it got stretched. That's not supposed to happen. So let's come in here and let's get an X length on here. And we'll tell it that is always equal to 12. That's better. Sorry, I'm just I'm just catching up to. Um, all right, so what did we do wrong? Well, let's see. Let's 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 do some more testing. Let's go to three and apply what happens. Hmm, our copies definitely aren't working right. Hmm. So I think a problem. All right, that's better. Okay. Copies. Brick length divided by 20. Oh, that was right before. One moment, one moment. Quick, add some color, Matt. Um. Oh, we got all kinds of color in here. Um, I already know the answer to it. No, we're... Uh... Filling in some great stuff. Let's see what uh, Andy says. It's because you didn't press enter in the formula. Um, but great to see people following along, right. chugging through equals some. Equals brick length divided by 20. I'll take that. Nice one. So one of the things, one of the things that I, I mean, I'm going to be, I, you know, I try to be very transparent with you guys and tell you where, where I struggle with things. One of the things I definitely find I run into with this is parentheses, parenthesis, however you pluralize parentheses use. Um, yeah, you have to like, make sure that you're uh, taking one away or multiplying the proper. Right. I put stuff um, in the wrong spot. Okay, that was right. And this is why I don't do this live. Hope you're happy. <laughs> Andy says, Andy recommends using the keyword copy instead of copies. Oh, did I just, I did. Bada bing, bada boom, Andy. MVP. It's a good thing Andy was here. Yes, that was that was honestly how simple that was. So, <laughs> <laughs> oversight. You, got it. you can plan, you can plan, and you can plan. But uh, yeah, something something's gonna happen. 
So there oh, we go. Oh, beautiful. Look at this. Oh my gosh. That's awesome. So yes, let me run back on what exactly that was. Uh, so something that you can do in, there's two different ways to view your uh, component attributes. You can view it this way, which just shows you the values that are actually being used, or you can turn on this formula view and that actually shows you what the formula is. Otherwise you have to double click in each field. So yeah. I had, it was all fine. It was all right. I, I guess that was a spelling error. I don't know. So what I said was copies instead of copy. By copy, it says, what copy is it? So if it's copy number zero, zero times 20 is zero plus four is four. If it's copy number one, one times 20 is 20 plus four means move it over 24 and so on. I had copies in there. So it was actually taking a value from here. It was the wrong thing to type. Uh, yes, Andy saved me. Thank you very much, sir. All right, so what we've just created right here is uh, a Lego that can, based on attributes, change size. Again, how often do you do this professionally? Probably never, pretty simple solution or pretty simple example. Um, all right, so here's what I wanna look at. We're almost there. These lines aren't working for me. I don't like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come into each of these pieces. We'll go to here, we'll look at the top first. I'm gonna hide everything else and I'm gonna get rid of any geometry I don't actually need. So in this case, I'm gonna offset the bottom. I'm gonna offset it four. I'm gonna select this piece, delete it. And then I'm gonna shift erase all these outside edges like that. I don't care about what's in a dynamic component. I'm moving faces around. It's, it's, you know, it's hectic stuff's happening. Uh, it's okay. I don't need that. I'm going to come into this one and let's see, we'll draw an edge over four this way. I always wonder if I can get this right. I'll just take that face right there. Option copy that over here. I can get rid of this line and this line. And then I'm going to shift erase pretty much like almost all of these edges around like that. So the only edges I should see are the ones that will actually be shown uh, on the final ones. So if I click outside here, I can see, look how those two just perfectly came together. Let's do the same to this yeah. side over here. Come Starting over to come here. together. I like it. Uh, Sasha says, hi. Hey, hello. Thanks hey. for joining. Um, Lego blocks or Lego buildings. Um, Aaron, at the beginning of the stream, so maybe you'll have to watch the uh, recording for the full thing, but uh, talked about how to model the bricks in normal SketchUp. Well, this is normal SketchUp too, but in SketchUp with, you know, traditional geometry. And then he showed a couple of the uh, the models that, he, that he's made using Lego. One of them is linked in the uh, description, the Lego Millennium Falcon and 3D Warehouse. And then this is using the dynamic components feature of SketchUp Pro for desktop that um, so you can make uh, sort of parametrically configurable Lego. Suppose you, uh, you know, need a, a block a specific length, you can just take it from a drop down and it'll automatically generate it. So he's going through the process of doing that. And where we've caught up to him here is cleaning up the extra edges to make it look like one continuous, beautiful piece of Lego. All right. And that is, is it. That is our dynamic component. So I can grab that right now. I'd say I need a one by three, apply, and there we go. If I want to take a copy of that, we'll stick that right up here. But this one's supposed to be a one by two. Change that to two, apply. There we go. Nice. So that, wow. so with that, all of your one bys could be the same. So going back to the original question that has been posed to me, in those bigger models do you use dynamic components and i don't because the amount of time it took me to do that is about 20 minutes and i was granted when i was head down just doing this it was it was about half the time but you know i slow down because i talk i i hurl myself on the ground when i make mistakes you know um <laughs> this was a slower modeling process than in real life but still <laughs> the amount of time to do that versus how quick i could just grab this guy copy it and then double the length it was so much quicker and easier to do that. And then the way that I do it for, so if, 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 so I have, I need a one by one and a one by two to grab those off the ground and option copy them, put them in my model versus grabbing this option, copy, putting it in the model, then making a copy again, and then selecting that one, changing it back to a one by and apply. Oops, I missed the apply. 
it's it's more time consuming to manipulate each individual brick as you put it in. The other thing is, uh, I was talking about this. One of the things I did to save weight in my model is I started applying colors directly to the component rather than to the geometry inside the component. So if I wanted to make this these bricks yellow and red, I could grab my red color, apply it, grab my yellow color, apply it. Uh, if I apply yellow to this one, oh, hey, it worked. Never mind. I was going to say I thought I might run into an issue with the nested components, but that worked beautifully. So Yeah, it's just that easy. So yeah, shut up, dude. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Let's see if I stretch that out. Oh yeah, it's still red. Um, so I, not to say that I mean dy dynamic components are awesome. There's some I, I mean it blows my mind seeing some of the stuff that people make with dynamic components. I did a one by here. I my brain couldn't come up with a decent way to multiply that out to make like two by bricks. So my my thought would be if I wanted to make a one by, I'd make it this way. And if I wanted a two by, I would just make a whole new component. I'd make basically the same thing I had here, but starting with two wide uh, and make that. Because I couldn't think in my head how to make one set of, compo of, of studs or two sets of studs without getting kind of tricky with like hiding pieces and having them show and that kind of thing. So uh, yeah, one by was all I could think to make. So... That's kind of where I went. That's why I went with that. But going back to what I was saying, pieces, the pieces where you could use dynamic components to make them and, and you know, make multiple pieces are the simplest ones you have to worry about. And to change the length of a one by two by brick or plate, whatever it is, even the big ones. So if I have a big like eight by eight plate, I know it's big, I mean this big but an eight by eight plate to grab the edge and move it a certain number of units times 20 it, it's two, it's two moves and then to copy studs copy studs it's seconds to go through and change it whereas creating a dynamic component to do all that is a lot more work and again if you if you had to copy it and make it every time but just do it once and then add it it's part of your component inventory you don't have to make it again so i i had a hard time justifying the use of dynamic components in, in the the models that i created you could still you could do it and it might be awesome um, but for what I was doing, it didn't make sense to, to add that. Um, yeah, absolutely. Simon actually says that this was the most understandable lesson on lesson on dynamic components he's ever seen. So props to you for that. Well, thank you very much, Simon. And thank you for taking, I just got, again, thanks for catching the misspelling of copy, Andy. <laughs> yes. Again. Appreciate it. Save the day, swooped in and That's saved right. the day. Um, and then you're talking about the why you don't do this for the larger models. And Keggy was asking, would it make the file size smaller to use dynamic components instead of regular? And, um, or would it make it bigger or does it make a difference? No, that's an interesting question. That was actually something I started wondering. Um, and it goes to the next point I was going to touch on. And that's that, uh, not, the 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 things that I've been creating have been probably 50% bricks and 50% other pieces. So other pieces might be bricks with holes in them or pieces coming off of them or ramp type pieces or that kind of thing where I don't know how I would add that or make that part of like this dynamic component. Like how do I make this so that this edge comes over 20 and then ramps down to three centimeters up like i don't know how i would create that geometry so that's a yeah. whole new brick so the amount of geometry that's in these you know one by two up to one by 14 bricks how much space is that taking up from components versus how much would be saved by putting it as a dynamic component i don't know i guess i mean i could play with it. i won't do it here but we could i could take this and just duplicate a hundred times and then save it twice and see you know, one, one dynamic, one not, and see, see the difference. But um, I don't know, there would be a huge monstrous change or, or savings. Um, cool. So I, one more thing, I know we're getting towards, we're at an hour and a half, but I did want to touch on this briefly, is what about the bricks that are not plates or bricks? What about the, the Lego pieces that are other things? 
So there is, if you look at the back of any Lego instructions, the, at the very back, they have every brick that's in the kit, you know, and it, by color. And below those, they always have the part number. And what you can do is you can look up online that seven, six or seven digit part number, and it'll tell you what the name of it is. Or uh, a, before a certain year, they actually had one schema for numbering their parts and they changed it at some point. So if you're looking at an old one, like the ones that I was modeling, the, the old building models, uh, you have to actually find something that can look up the old number and tell you what the new number is. <laughs> oh boy, okay. <laughs> Which adds, adds a level of uh, fun to things. Yeah, it's like a scavenger hunt. It is, yeah, it's, yeah. But once you find that, there are probably a half dozen different uh, repositories or programs that will let you find a 3D model of that specific item. So what most of those let you do then is export a file, an OBJ or a Collada file, and you can actually model from it. So I wanna show you that real quick. Um, and like I said, I think Tyson's gonna get into a little more of this, but I did wanna just not leave you hanging because anybody wants to go in and model this way, uh, so this is my process. I'm going to go ahead and import. I have this parts. Uh, it is a Collada file. I'm going to import it. And it's going to come in at a scale. I don't know what this scale is. I don't even, I can't even say for sure that this is constant. This is coming in from a program called Designer Studio, which is it's downloadable. Uh, it has a access to an online database, which is regularly updated whenever new pieces come out, I guess. Um, and it lets you drop, all, all I use it for is finding the pieces I need, dropping them into the model and then exporting Collada file. That's the only thing I do in it. So when this comes in, it's going to be at some scale for whatever reason, it's always upside down and every face is backwards. That's, that's also <laughs> just what it does. So I might take it and flip it right side up. This is, this is a part called a saucepan, by the way, getting saucy with our models. So oh. <laughs> you're a comedian. So I do. All right. So when I look at this now, uh, generally speaking, one thing that every, I, I want to say every, but most Lego pieces have is they either have a piece like this. that's a handle or they have a stud or a receiver for a stud. So I know that in my model, these studs or this, this space that the stud's supposed to slot into should be 12, right? So if I go into context here and I look down on this and I go straight across, this should be 12. Um, so two questions happen right now. How do I know I'm going straight across? I don't know how many sides this is. There's a lot of sides on here, but how do I know that this is, is I'm going edge to edge, which is the value I need? If you look at the length and I pop to one segment to the left and then one segment to the right, they are smaller than this one. So that means anytime you go from a circle, the, the longest dimension you'll have is one side to the other. So I know that that line right there is that full circle length. And if I come in with my dimension, my, my tape measure, and I go one edge of that line to the other, and then I tell it that should be 12, It'll say, do you want to react it or, or resize the active group? That's the component I'm in. Yes, I do. So now if I look at that, that looks a little more, a little more corrector. Nice. And so you had to be in the context of that component to do that resizing thing, right? Exactly. Because if I just did it out here, it would have resized everything in the model. By being in context, I force it to just resize what's in there. So cool. now that I have this, I don't want to use it for real. So what I've, what I have found is as I start looking at dimensions here, Oh, that was perfect. That figures. Let's see. Oh yeah, there we go. So this is not an even dimension. It's some weird, weird, just off dimension. Uh, and I find this in most of the models. I actually have a couple of perfect dimensions here. That's, that is very strange. I don't, I don't like it. Um, so what I'll usually do is use this group as a component to trace in 3D. So what that means is I'll come, I wanna flip it upside down. I'm gonna draw a circle right here. And I'm gonna tell it I want that to be six because it's half of that component. And then actually we, we need to draw right on top. I can just take this. That's gonna offset by, what is this? 
So it should offset by two. You saw that was 1.97, so I'm gonna make it even two. All right, and then this is going to push down, how far is this? So this is 3.99, I'm gonna tell it to go down exactly four, enter, get rid of that. It's weird how some, they're like, they're off by different amounts and that's, some are, right. Yes, that, and that's exactly the problem I have is I can't just grab it and say, okay, use this whole thing because half of them are right, half of them are off. So I don't know if that's a translation thing. I don't know if they're just modeled kind of eh, close enough. Um, not good enough for me. All right, so coming out here, we want this to come out five. So I'm gonna go offset that five. And then I'm gonna pull that down to here. And that's 19.9. So I'm gonna type in 20, enter. Flip back over. Whoa. Let's clean this up real quick. Offset this two. I'm gonna push this back down. It's gonna snap down to that's the face, right? So I want to that's too far. So I want to go down. I don't know. Let's see here. Let's actually let's see if I snap the inside face here. What's this? 18 enter and then i can clean up some of this stuff i just draw a line across here that'll give me that there we go reverse that face so you can see this goes it goes pretty quick and i'm using it, like i said as kind of a reference uh, i'm going to turn this on right here if i draw a line down this way and then come over and see about where where's this handle all right that's about six down so i'm gonna draw a line down six and then this handle is around eight. So I'm gonna draw a circle. I'm actually gonna come off here. Let's do this. I'm gonna draw another line this way. Come out to here, about 17. Whoops. It's nice that because it's Lego, you know that it's like all known dimensions that all fit into the other one. So you know it's not you know, oh, maybe the engineers was like, well, it doesn't really matter. I'll make it 18.95 or whatever. You, exactly. know, you know, it's the exact one. Yep, that is exactly right. And that's that's key to this. All right, so I drag that in there. I'm just making, I, I want the faces to just overlap because then the next thing I'll do, I'll grab these two. I'll say intersect face with selection. That'll give me that nice clean break around there. If I grab all of this and I make it a new component, call it my saucepan. And then uh, I can use something like solid inspector to clean that up, get rid of those internal faces. And not that I have to do that. I, again, probably not going to print these, not, these aren't going anywhere, but then that gets rid of that extra geometry that was on the inside. So if I look at that in x-ray, I don't have any overlapping geometry or anything like that. It's nice and clean. Yeah. And that, then I would go like this and here's the step. Don't forget this step. If I look at components right now, uh, I still got that in here because it was bum, imported bum, bum. as a component. That's right. It's sneaky. I've done this and like come down here and had like 10 components hanging out from different imports I've done. So I'm going to go window, model info, and statistics, purge unused. All right. There we Get go. Get out of here. All right. And with that, I got a saucepan. Just that easy. Um, so those, those right there, guys, are the steps that I took to make all those models we looked at at the beginning of the stream. Um, it's just rinse and repeat over and over and over again. And uh, like I said, try to come up with an organizational method of keeping your piles of Legos easy to use over on the side. But I know the final model is not real exciting. We're gonna have to do something different for the thumbnail because this is boring. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the well, process so was interesting to get here, but yeah. The, yeah. Uh... Let's maybe show the cityscape. Or yeah, something. that's a good idea. We'll, we'll bring that that street street back up for the thumbnail. But uh, yeah. that's it. That's that's what we we wanted to to dig into today. Yeah, that's awesome. Can't tell if that was way too loud or not, but uh, that, that was really cool. Me. Awesome. I was uh, I was very impressed. I learned some stuff, and I'm sure people in the chat did as well. Very um, cool. Yeah, appreciated your sharing your knowledge. Your um, your journey through dynamic components and Lego in general. Absolutely. And, uh, heck, there you go.
yeah, that was fun. Uh, like I said, I, 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 do, I know we, we wandered off the beaten path today, guys, and hopefully everybody's cool with that. Um, we're, we're always up for trying new stuff here too. So if you guys have specific ideas you think would be cool, if, if reviewing models or there's specific processes you'd like to see, we tend to uh, pick a thing to model and spend time on that, which is cool. It's, I, I thoroughly enjoy it. Uh, some of my favorite live models where we pick something I didn't know how to model it and kind of figure it out together. Um, that's awesome. But uh, we're up for doing other things like this. So if there's a process you can think of or a type of modeling you want to know more about, let us know. And we'll uh, we'll try to talk about putting a show together over, around it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we did have one question. I think I must have missed it earlier in the chat. But um, I had a question about color or texture in dynamic components. And would you be able to create a drop down that would be like, oh, this is a yellow brick or a red brick? Yeah, I could. Uh... Okay, so I could, in theory, take this guy, uh, bring my my attributes back up, and to the whole brick, the whole big container, I could add a material attribute, make this uh, visible, and I'm just gonna put in the colors I wanna show red, yellow, and white. And then I would be able to see my options. So now I have the length I can change and I have a color I can change. So I could apply that, apply that. Something, something's wrong. I, I did not do it. Something. Oh, no sweat. Well, the, you know, the yellow worked or the red, sorry, the red oh, worked. I mean, I didn't put values in for them. That that'll, that'll do it. Ew. Um, and this, this value here can be, uh, I think you can put a hex code or name of an actual named material and that'll, that'll work also. Uh, and then there's a handful of default values for, uh, some of these. There we go. Aha, uh -huh. that's very cool. Cool. Yeah, so that would be possible too. That's another option. It's a good call. Um, and responding to your call for uh, suggestions for topics, Jeff said he would like to see the journey from geometry to rendering. Uh, I know we too. have talked about that um, internally. Um, so yeah, that's definitely on the list of possibilities. So stay tuned. Watch this space. It may just uh, your wish might just come true. So that's it could happen. Yeah. Cool. All right. We're going to call it here. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Matt, for hanging out. Thank you to, I think I saw Nick Donovan and uh, Tyson all Tyson. in the chat. Thanks for hanging out with us, the team members. Uh, and But most importantly, thanks, thanks to you guys for watching. Thanks for listening. Uh, if you guys weren't here, it would just be us sitting in a virtual room together, modeling for each other. Not as, not as much fun. Just to be honest. Yeah. Absolutely. We love hanging out with you. And uh, you know what I say? Have a great weekend, folks. Do it. All right. We'll see you guys next week. Tyson will be right here. Come back next week, noon. More more awesomeness will be happening. So we'll see you guys Don't then. Don't miss it. Bye. Society is so obsessed with comics. Leg out.